Hi, Tony back here with you. And we're on a job here in Dunleary. And this is me and my friend Lawrence. So hello, on. Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence is all the way down from Cork. He's a Cork man and he's drove up today just to commission this job in Dunleary with me. So first of all, we're going to show you the outside meter cabinet and what we've done here on this job to get the power over to the fuse board. That's fine. Them. Right, so we're right out here in Dunleary and as you can see, down there at the end of the street is the sea. And this is a nice big house that we're doing here and it has a full solar array, full gateway back up and it's a SIG energy system. Starting here at the meter cabinet, we have the ESB that have brought a brand new supply over this pole here, across from the other side of the street into our property. We terminated with our earth electrode, which you must have here in Ireland. And they have an enhanced supply, which means they've got an 80 or 100 amp fuse in here. Over here, we have what we call safe isolation for the ESB, so we can work on the system. And below, from this point downwards, is what I've done. We have here a 25 mil free core armoured, because it's a long run back to the fuse board. We have double insulated tails here up to our safe isolation point. And in this meta enclosure, we have a main switch and a B80 fuse. That takes care of our grid supply. Now we'll move on to the solar panels. Okay, so here at the front of the house, and it is quite a large property, you see up there on the roof, we have 10 solar panels. I can show you those on a west facing roof. And around the other side, we have another 10 on a southeast facing roof. Okay, so in the house here, with Lawrence helping me lift these heavy, heavy batteries, these are the eight kilowatt SIG batteries, and they no longer provide handles for them. So it's not much fun putting these in place. Above there is the inverter going in there. We have our DC isolation, we have our AC isolation, RCBOs, time energy meter, and above here, we have our consumer unit, our fuse board, and our gateway. Now, if I open the gateway, just a quick explanation here would be the grid supply. That was the meter cabinet I just showed you incoming from the street, from the ESB supply or your DNO supply. We have a smart port, which is connected through an RCBO down here, and it's going out to a backup generator, but we're not going to be commissioning that today, so that stays off. Coming down here, we have the SPD, which you have to switch on. Backup goes over to our fuse board. Inverter two and three we don't use. And inverter one is our supply down to here and into our inverter that's gonna come on top of this. Over on the fuse board, this system's been designed basically to accommodate the, the gateway because we have some additional items in here, which we've added here. And this is for a single point of isolation and it's a four pole contactor, which disconnects the SIG Energy inverter and disconnects the backup, um, the backup smart port generator as well. We also have our smart loads here, or CBO, which over on our consumer unit, as you can see, is not labeled yet. Up here, we have a B63, a four pole contactor here, 63, and we have our high load and we could say for instance this might be the oven this might be the hob this might be the jacuzzi this might be the ev charger these loads that we do not want on our backup generator in the event of a power failure are all going through this contactor and quite simply when we switch do you want to switch that off Lawrence the, the contactor there you go and that's disconnected our non-essential loads and switch it back on again and it's back on again it's a bit noisy you can see the light is lit there. Our central loads here are all sockets and lights. And of course, on one of these is our DC rapid disconnection and our AC disconnection. So we're gonna assemble this inverter and get it live and show you a final video. Okay, so the final bit of the video here is the system is up and running and commissioned. It's all commissioned, just the top cover to throw on there. And we have full connection to the consumer units and we have the gateway all connected as well. And my colleague here, Lawrence, is going to explain to you just the two brief 
custom modifications we did here to have this system comply to Irish regulations. Okay, Lawrence, what do you understand about the single point of isolation? So in the event of an emergency, this contactor will drop out all your DC and all your AC uh, circuits. It will basically cut everything that's in circuit. And in, with this other uh, feature here then, is in the event of a grid fail or your grid failure, this will this this will lose power and cut power to all your unessential loads, meaning you will still have power for your lighting and small power, which will be fed from the battery. So as not to run the batteries down, we definitely want to disconnect all of our essential loads. So we've plugged in fluorescent light up there, which is on our unessential. And our main ceiling lights up there are on our essential. So do you want to do the ultimate test? Go into island mode. Yep, I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Now, as you can see, fluorescent light has gone out because it's on the unessential loads. Ceiling lights are all still on. Lighting out in the hallway is still on. Sockets are still on. Fridges are still on. But what I must say is this contactor has clicked out now through the failure of the mains power, given us much more battery life down here. But it's also important to have all your fuses that are higher value than the fuse of the actual solar PV system here, which is a B25, must be disconnected in order to give us enough inrush current to be able to successfully trip any fuses if there is a fault in island mode. So anyway, over to you, Lawrence. How was your day? Very good. Very informative. Very good. And you're going to be fitting one of these systems soon, I'm sure. Hopefully. Grand. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So goodbye.